Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the secant function. Now, as we're graphing a secant function, we have to remember that the secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine. So if we were looking at graphing out a function that said f of x equals the secant of x. So what we're going to do is use what we know about the cosine function to help us out. And we're actually going to pretend that this equation in here says the cosine of x, and I'm gonna graph out the cosine function, and then we're gonna make adjustments to it to get our secant graph. So when we were talking about cosine graphing, we said that we were gonna make an x and a y chart. This one does not have a phase shift, so we're gonna start at zero. The b value is one, meaning that the period is gonna be two pi, so we're gonna end at two pi. Halfway between zero and two pi is pi, Halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2. And halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Now I plug in 0 for my x. And remember, we're doing a cosine right now. The cosine of 0 is 1. I plug in pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. I plug in pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. We plug in 3 pi over 2, we get 0. We plug in 2 pi, we get 1. So I'm going to plot out these ordered pairs. Now when I draw in this graph, I'm just gonna draw it in a dotted line right now because this isn't the graph that we actually want to take a look at. We need to make adjustments to this cosine graph to turn it into a secant graph. Now as I'm thinking about a secant, we said earlier that the secant is one over the cosine. So what I'm gonna do is take these y values that we've got plotted out on our graph and I'm gonna think about doing the reciprocal with them. And I'm going to start by focusing on the y values of 0. Because if I flipped those over, I'd technically get like 1 over 0, which is an undefined value. So anywhere we have zeros for our cosine function, the secant function is undefined, meaning that there's going to be an asymptote at that specific x value. So this secant graph has two asymptotes, one at pi over 2 and one at 3 pi over 2. Now if I think about those other values, this one, if I were to flip that over, I would still get one over one, so that doesn't change. This negative one, I would still get negative one, and for positive one, I'd still get positive one. So these points aren't actually changing, but now I wanna figure out what's happening with those chunks of the graph. Now if we remember that a cosine graph is periodic, that means that it repeats itself. So if this graph were to continue to the right, we hit this maximum point, so it would actually have to turn and come back down and hit the x-axis again. So there'd actually be another asymptote here on the right-hand side. And if I did similar things moving to the left, this chunk of the graph would have to come back down and hit the x-intercept again. So there'd be another asymptote in there. Now what this does is it kind of splits our graph up into these U-shaped pieces, almost parabola-like. If I were to take those U-shaped pieces and flip them over, because a secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, then I'd get this U-shaped chunk heading upwards between these left two asymptotes. I'd get a U-shaped graph heading downwards in the middle between these asymptotes, and I'd get another U-shaped graph heading upwards on the outside. So these red portions of my graph is the graph of the actual secant function. Now just like changing the a, b, c, and d values of a cosine graph would adjust its picture, same thing is gonna hold true for the secant. So here we've got three secant of x over two plus pi over two, and just like we did on the last example, we're gonna just pretend that this says the cosine for a second and do all of our normal cosine things. So here there's a phase shift and a period adjustment, so I wanna find a new starting point. We're not gonna start at zero this time because of all of that extra stuff going on inside of our parentheses. So we take what's inside of the parentheses, set it equal to zero. First thing I would need to do is subtract that pi over two over to the other side. Then in order to get rid of this divided by two, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. So I'm gonna get an x value of negative pi. So as I'm thinking about making my x and y chart, my first x value should be negative pi. Now if I find my ending point, I take that stuff inside of the parentheses and I'd set it equal to two pi. 
I'd have to subtract the pi over 2 over to the other side. So I would get x over 2 equals 3 pi over 2. Multiply the 2 over, and I get an x value of 3 pi. So my graph, my last x value, is going to be at 3 pi. Now if I look halfway between negative pi and 3 pi, that's going to be pi. Halfway between negative pi and pi is 0. Halfway between pi and 3 pi is 2 pi. So I'm going to start by plugging in negative pi. So I get negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1 times 3 is 3. I plug in 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0 times 3 is 0. I plug in the pi. I get pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Well, that's just pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. I plug in 2 pi. 2 pi over 2 is just pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0 times 3 is still 0. I plug in 3 pi. 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, which just reduces down to 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is 1 times 3 is 3. So then as I'm looking at these ordered pairs, I've got negative pi 3. So I'm going to say that's right here. At 0, I'm at 0. At pi, I'm at negative 3. At 2 pi, I'm back to 0. And at 3 pi, I'm up at 3. And then again, I'm going to draw in this graph with a dotted line because this isn't really the graph that we want to take a look at. We still need to make our adjustments. And actually, I'm going to continue this graph a little bit. I'm going to continue it to the right since we know that this graph would have to come back down. I'm also going to continue it to the left since we know the graph would come back down there as well. Now, where I've got these zeros, where I've got these x-intercepts happening, those are going to be the asymptotes of my graph. So I'm just going to draw in those vertical asymptotes along each one of those x-intercepts. And then this splits my graph into these u-shaped chunks. So I need to flip these u-shaped chunks over. And then these red chunks of our graph really represent this secant function. In our last example, we're going to look at solving a trig equation algebraically. So we want to find the value of x between pi and 3 pi over 2, such that the secant of x is equal to negative 2. And the first thing that I'm going to do is draw myself a picture. Now, we are between pi and 3 pi over 2, meaning that we've got some angle rotating around landing us in the third quadrant. Now, I'm going to draw a triangle in here, and this is going to be a right triangle. Now, we're trying to find x, which is the angle that's rotating us from the initial side around to this terminal side. I'm going to throw a theta in the angle of this reference triangle, and we're going to use that to help us find the big angle that's rotating us around into this third quadrant. Now, we know the secant is negative 2. I'm going to take that and make that a fraction by putting it over 1. Now, a secant fraction is made by doing the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. But I have to be careful where I put the negative. 2 is going to be the hypotenuse, but it's actually going to be negative 1 as that adjacent side. Because this side is moving us left into this third quadrant, that value needs to be negative. Now, if we think about our special right triangles, we've got a relationship in one of our special right triangles that would result in this kind of 1 and 2 look. And it's actually our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Across from the 30 degree angle is x. Across from the 60 degree angle is x root 3. And across from the right angle, the hypotenuse is 2x. So if I'm looking for what's adjacent to just this 1, I'm kind of thinking about this 1x down here. So I'm thinking that this is going to be a 60 degree angle in here for theta. So what's happening in here is we've gone 60 degrees past this negative x-axis. Now we should recognize that as 180 degrees. So if I go 60 degrees past that, then that ends up being 240 degrees. But if I want to talk about that in terms of radians, then that's the angle 4 pi over 3. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.